Thank you, Chair. Dear High Representative, colleagues, yesterday we commemorated the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a document which has had a tremendous positive impact on lives of many around the world. However, the celebration has been more thought-provoking than I would have wished for, and this is reflected in the conclusions of this report on human rights and democracy in the world in 2017. It is only to regret that the last years, including 17, were marked by a dramatic increase in human rights violations, democracy crises, and conflicts all over the world, affecting the most vulnerable of our societies. The prosecution of Rohingya in Myanmar, the crackdown of opposition in Cambodia, Venezuela or Nicaragua, the rule of law disarray in Congo, war crimes in Syria and Yemen, drastically shrinking civil society space in our direct neighborhood, Russia. These are numerous other examples stand for before my eyes as a painful reminder of the negligence of human rights principles. In parallel, we have also seen the growing number of populist and nationalist forces even among the EU member states resigning to such means as using disinformation and restricting laws to consolidate their power. These are all the worrying trends which have been taken into account and documented in the report and its country annexes. The aim of this document is to provide a critical analysis of the EU's actions and provide answers to the questions on what can be more done from the EU side and how can we advance our human rights action response to make it more effective, preemptive and focalized. Therefore, despite being concerned, I am very, I'm also optimistic because during the preparatory work of this report, we have found a strong agreement throughout the entire political spectrum in this House on our main priorities in the human rights field. There was a firm understanding and agreement that the EU is and shall remain the leader on human rights fight in the world and the UN system. I believe that the EU's global role in leadership also implies coordination and guidance in fighting a common position among Western community counterparts which would place human rights in the heart of its foreign policy. By this, I also refer to rather disappointing stance by our current US leadership in this regard. For the EU to be more effective, it is crucial that the human rights clauses are mainstream to all our external policies and agreements, including trade policy. Deepening political and economic ties with EU partner countries is our fundamental objective, but for this goal to be achieved, we should aim to make a better use of the human rights conditionality. I am convinced that in such cases, when partner countries persistently fail to observe the principles of democracy, rule of law, and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, there is a point of time when we have to face certain sanctions from the EU side. On the other hand, those who respect their commitments to these principles should receive adequate privileges for being EU partners. I strongly call on the EU member states to uphold this commitment in their bilateral agreements too. As far as other priorities are concerned, with this report we emphasize the importance of strengthening support to human rights defenders in our neighborhood and third countries. Our support to their tireless and courageous endeavors is the only way to go forward. Thank you.